Hey guys, welcome back to the show. I appreciate you joining us. Um, before we kick anything off, I just want to announce that we've hit over a thousand subscribers recently and truly, truly appreciate everybody's support of the channel. I appreciate your feedback and look forward to, you know, many more videos to come here in the future. So uh, again, from my, you know, the depth of my heart, thank you all for uh, subscribing and supporting my channel. Yeah. Okay guys, so let's talk about what we're gonna do today. And what we're gonna address is actually an alignment problem with the um, new rotors that we put on along with the 21 inch wheel on the uh, 07 Road King Blue. So let me show you what the, well, I have a temporary fix in place. We'll take that out and I'll show you what the problem is and how we're gonna resolve that. So let's jump into it. So if you didn't know, there are two spacers on both sides of the wheel on this uh, Road King. And I think that goes to say with all of the different models of Harley Davidson's, um, or at least for the Touring and the uh, Softail models, from what I know. They are not the same size. So the left side is about 25 millimeters, which is roughly about an inch or so, I think. Um, but the right side is a little bit smaller and we'll take a measurement of that so I can show you what that looks like. Now, the problem that I ran into is when I assembled this, the brake caliper on this side of the bike uh, wasn't lining up, right? It, it, it uh, the forks were just uh, barely, uh, too, you know, just too narrow. So what we've done is we've temporarily put a, a fix in place which was to add some very thin uh, carbon washers to accommodate for that extra space. And we're gonna replace those along with that spacer with a drag specialty uh, 25 millimeter or one inch axle spacer. So we're addressing that problem. Now, uh, I've got those spacers in place, so of course everything lines up right now, but what we'll do is I'll take that, that those shims out and kind of put it back together roughly to just show you what it looks like when things aren't lining up. Um, the other thing is, as we do these shims, we also want to kind of keep in mind that you still want to keep things center, right? So you don't want things to be shifted one way or the other. So just be aware of that, take your measurements. If something is drastically moved to one side or the other, that should be a red flag for you. Uh, I would say if you run into that situation, stop what you're doing. Do a little bit of research. You may have to go to a mechanic shop to have them look at it, but um, for my, you know, for this video, I don't have those problems. And so this is gonna be relatively simple, but just as a heads up, you know, not to shy away from it for yourselves, but uh, if you run into that situation, that's kind of that marker for you to say, whoa, hang on, I'm missing something. So let's go ahead and um, let's pull those little washers out. All right guys, so we've pulled off the, um, pulled out the spacer and the shims that I was talking about. So these are the two shims and yeah, I, I wasn't really sure. And guys, just so you know, this is something that I came up with. Like, so it's not, I didn't do any research on this. I just realized that because of the spacing, I needed a bigger shim and I didn't have one available. So I improvised by using some space or some washers. Uh, I needed to find a particular size washer, which I couldn't find a one-off. And so I ended up using these carbon fiber washers. And I can tell you, not a great idea. You can see this one here is somewhat like warped or whatever. I don't It's kind of, you know, you can see the pressure um, molded it a little bit. And then this one is a little worn. So, if you're looking to, you know, resolve a similar issue, this is not the way to go. So, you know, one of the things I hope you all get to do is learn from both, not only my, my, uh, my wins, uh, my, my, but also learn from my, my losses, right? So my mistakes. Uh, so let's take a look at 
the width of our spacer and then we'll compare it to the other spacer so we're going to go ahead and just use the digital caliper we'll zero it out and we're going to take a look at the spacer so we know that's a one inch spacer or 25 millimeter and this spacer here is only 22 millimeter right so it's 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 a little shy right and hence why i ended up using these guys because these ones are about one and a half uh millimeters so of course combine three right uh which would give me that 22 plus the three the 25 millimeter spacer and that allowed for things to to work properly so let me let me go ahead and I'm going to put this stock spacer back in so I can show you what issue I was having and why we're doing all this work. All right. So this is the issue we're trying to solve for. This is the point of this video with the smaller spacer in place. This is the 22 millimeter spacer. And then guys, if you're jacked on uh, Amer uh, English versus metric, I apologize. Um, it just you know i start off with a lot of uh metric stuff so i'm going to reference the metric size to it um but that said i've got the 22 millimeter on this side the one inch or the 25 millimeter spacer that stock for this bike is on the other side and when you go to put on your caliper you hit and that's because this fork is in a little too far now i did try to adjust it um thinking maybe i just had something twisted or whatever but um that that is not the issue it's truly a, a spacing issue um, i double checked my rotors just to make sure i didn't have uh, something off on the rotors and those are good to go so the only um, fix that i could think of in this particular case was to increase the spacer size by the three additional millimeters that um, uh, would allow for this fork to be pushed out a little bit more and it lines everything up so we're going to go ahead and remove the spacer and put on our brand new one inch spacer. So this is actually going to be a pretty convenient um, effort here just in just in the fact that I don't have to worry about pulling the tire or the wheel away from the bike at all. All I have to do is push the, um, rod, uh, the axle back into the other side remove that shim or spacer get the other spacer out we're going to put a little bit of axle grease on it because um, you want things nice and greased up we'll put it in place and then we put it all back together it's a very simple fix to a very annoying issue and if you don't fix it if you wedge your brake caliper in place what you're going to end up with is probably some you know rubbing brake pads that you're going to constantly be trying to chase and figure things out and if you've seen some of my prior videos you know i did have that but not related to this uh the other thing is if you're not chasing after it then what you'll end up with is because there's going to be that little bit of pressure there that means that your rotor is going to be pushing against a particular pad and you're going to have uneven wear on your brake pad so that's why we're addressing it uh, in this fashion so let's go ahead and take it apart a high speed you through this so that way you don't have to uh, bear with all the noises and sounds of the ratchets and whatnot. Alright guys, so we have the axle on, the new spacers in place, and fits like a glove. So it's not like there's a huge gap or anything. We've got just enough space for this caliper to fit, and it doesn't uh, 
cause any problems on the other side as well. So at this point, all we need to do is put our caliber bolt in, torque them down, and put our caps on. And this is a done deal. We'll have to do some cleanup because uh, I got some grease here on the inner part of the rotor, which I don't want. Uh, chrome's already hard enough to keep clean, so I got to clean that up. <laughs> so let me go ahead and uh, put this caliper together and we'll take a look at the finished product. We're all back together, guys. And what you may want to do is pump your brakes a couple of times if you had them, if, they, if you had the caliper off, you're going to want to pump them a couple times, make sure everything's set, and then check this, the, the wheel motion, make sure it spins freely. Um, if there's a slight bit of drag, that, that's fine, uh, but you shouldn't have to really crank down on it. If you do, something's wrong, take it apart, relook at it, and again, if you run into a situation where things look really, really off, stop what you're doing and you may have to reassess the whole situation and perhaps take it to your local shop or something like that. Uh, but all in all, this is, should be a very simple process and you can correct small issues like that. Now, if you find a significant difference, like I said, um, you know, two millimeters, whatever, even though engineering wise, that's that's not a lot, but it's 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 a good number. Um, but if you're looking at like half an inch or something like that, big problems. Don't try to address that stuff by yourself because you got a bigger problem that needs to be addressed. Okay guys, so that's it for today's uh, video. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, it's a simple fix to a small problem. Um, just be aware of the, you know, kind of the red flags. And if you hit one of those red flags where things are very, very different, then be careful. Um, when you're messing with your front wheel especially, uh, I take a lot of caution just because if things go wrong there, then, you know, things aren't going to go well for you. So be careful, ride safe, and until my next video comes out, I hope to see you in the wind.